your stream will begin shortly. Welcome to Winternomics TV. Your stream will begin shortly. Welcome to Winternomics TV. Your stream will begin shortly.
Welcome to Winter Topics TV. Your stream will begin shortly. Welcome to Winter Topics TV. Your stream will begin shortly. Welcome to Winter Topics TV. Your stream will begin shortly.
What up? What up? Hold on. I know my microphone's bad already. Let's see. Fix that. All right. Microphone should be good. What's good in the hood, everybody? Fucking uh, final Friday, right? Let's get out of here and get out on a good note. Been a week in the... Shit, a week, almost two weeks of like really shitty fucking inside market activity until yesterday. Um, really crazy rip came in the middle of the session. Hopefully you guys are paying attention to that. Um, it really feels like there's nobody in the marketplace. So trying to keep you guys like, you know, mentally uh, flexible to deal with what comes. There's a lot of crazy shit going on in there. Lots of crazy news, lots of FUD on CZ again. It's amazing how the media can keep finding things to talk about with CZ and just never mention Sam anymore, isn't it? Sam's the one actually in trouble, but by the way the media's aiming cannons at CZ, you'd be uh, you'd be pretty sure that fucking uh, CZ committed the crime that Sam actually has done. It's pretty uh, pretty ridiculous. This filter, filter is a little tricky. Um, this is the it tracks your whole body, so hopefully it keeps me in there like it's supposed to. It was really stable earlier. I hope it doesn't go fucking crazy through this whole show. That should be happening. Would you, uh, would you guys think of uh, today's art? So I started working on this from fucking 7 a.m. to try and get ahead of it, and man, I, I had to do so many photos, a couple different outfits, a couple different themes. This wasn't the original one. I was working on something else, and it just couldn't, couldn't get the look and feel right, so... Thought I'd go with, uh, you know, the old catch you on the flip. Dig it? It's harder than you'd think to get that motherfucker. Oh my god. <laughs> you'd never believe how much time I spend on that shit. Um, let's see if I can show you something here. Yeah, you want to see fucking how, how crazy it is, like, to try and, like, figure this out, like, where I start. Um, working on just getting the right filter for, like, an hour. So target pick, taking pictures. It's many that I didn't use. You know. <laughs> it's a bit of work. You'd never guess what it takes to get there. And then make something out of it. Um, but, yeah. I was gonna call it the golden child, but I went to a different direction. Market hits you in the face a lot, it's teaching you lessons, you know? And if you fail to fucking learn those things, you won't last in this game long. So that was the theme of this one, you know? The market's always right. No matter how you feel, no matter how liquid it is, no matter how many megaphones it gives you, it's telling you something, you know? If there's megaphones happening on resolutions you don't remember seeing them, then you have to go back resolutions so you don't see them, right? Megaphones are a sign of a, low liquidity we typically see them more in like you know uh, low resolution charts more frequently but the fact that we're seeing them at higher resolutions is telling us something completely different and i remember you know a time in the market that things felt and people talked about the market like this and honestly it was in 2002 end of 2001 2002 when the market just was vacant you know, at the end of the uh, internet bubble, there just was no liquidity for day traders. It was like you came from all these funds that popped up all over the place with people just, you know, retail traders and like, you know, groups starting you know, million dollar funds themselves. And that all died. You know, the day trader market of 2001, along with patent day trader law, wiped out the day trader of that day. And in the bottom of that, it was like that. You know, I was trading for two different funds and uh, you know, one of the big problems was people were contracted on volume not how much profit you made how much uh commissions you could pay and uh you couldn't trade a lot so a lot of guys that i was with you know when we went down to south florida and we got that deal that we were like we can't we can't do what you're asking you know there's pretty much no liquidity past like 10 a.m and that really is the last time i remember it being so illiquid like we see today was back then for sustained periods it's like keep waiting all month and it never shows the fuck up um, it feels a lot like the way we saw August, you know, six weeks of just fucking garbage. And then, you know, a week and a half, two weeks of garbage here. And it tells us that there's low liquidity and higher resolutions, that this is likely a, a mega structure compared to what we're dealing with in low resolutions in the intraday. Um, so that's why we went over what we did in the last show. You guys been digging the, the themes of the last show? I've been trying to make sure you have a reason to go back and watch, you know, so we try to put a little lesson into each one of these shows. So... They have their own feel more so than they did before. So hope you guys have uh, gotten engaged on that, you know. Try to keep it fresh. Try to make sure you're always learning something. 
I gotta say, I think I fell in love with this fucking time traveler fucking one. This one came out cool. You get it, right? This is like the fabric of space time. I got a really cool fabric effect. I tried to replicate it again last night, and motherfucker, I can't pull it off twice. So that's it. <laughs> that's the final one. Um, but yeah, that guy's badass. But right, you know, um, all these are meant to communicate, you know, more than just the art. It's to, to give you ideas and, and ways to think about the market and approach it. Um, so, you know, from the art to the write-ups to the show, hopefully everything is, you know, helping to come together to give you guys, like, better eyes on everything, along with the concept calls. Um, pretty weird. Didn't see a lot of you acolytes for the Euro-Asian concept call. Over 100 of you guys didn't show up at all um, for the concept calls, and that's the whole reason you join YouTube Premium. So don't fall too, too much asleep. Um, I showed up on Thursday morning at 6 in the morning. Only uh, four new people that weren't in the previous one showed up, you know, out of the 70 that was on uh, Tuesday. So not the... Uh, not the brightest thing to miss it both days. Um, uh, what did Jester say? You agree with Jester? What did he say? I can't find him. Shows on console calls tie in real well. Agree with Jester the last few ones. Yeah, and uh, if you remember back in the days, you know, when I was like heavy on Twitter, I always uh, demonstrated the concepts live with, uh, you know, the animals out on Twitter uh, right in front of your faces. So help to reinforce that it wasn't just some kind of theoretical shit or some BS. It was literally what we used to read markets and people in them. Um, shout out to Eli. Appreciate the AEDs. I never know what that is. <laughs> forget what region that is. Um, well, I know where you are. I just forget what that stands for. 369. I appreciate you, sir. Uh, <clears throat> how many do you got? 116? Not too shabby. Um, sorry, just going up. Just check if I missed anything else. Yeah, the concept calls are different vibes. I go with what you give me, but I did try to reinforce on what we did on Tuesday and I add a little bit more to it. So hopefully this helps you guys with your planning and slowing down. Um, Izzy left a really good note for you guys in the Trading Lounge uh, channel about like you know the pace of life and stuff like you know. Um, trading to live and actually integrating with life. If you guys aren't like teenagers all sitting in front of the computer all day, um, you have to make it make sense with your life, you know, and uh, the lowest resolutions aren't always, you know, the best place to be. Um, you know, if you're going to be doing anything uh, with any meaningful money, you're not going to be able to sit around and, and day scalp all fucking day. So, you know, if you've got businesses you run and things like that, you know, deal with the resolutions that allow you to, to manage your life. You know, don't force yourself to be in places if there's the only opportunity. Price is fractal. The same opportunities exist on every resolution. You just have to be more patient in the higher ones. That's all. Um, all right. Memos and things. I better see some fucking amazing amounts of scorecards out of you motherfuckers after those concert calls. You out of here. Who saw this one? We talked about this uh, about a year and a half ago, I think, or a year ago. This is the first country that's being forced into the metaverse because of inhospitable conditions in the world. Did you guys see this one? It's a small, tiny uh, South Pacific island nation. They're just about underwater. Let's see, where's their map? Right here. They're being submerged. Remember we told you, like, you know, the, the world would become such an inhospitable place that the Ready Player One future would be a place that it'd be more fun to be in the metaverse than be in the real world. That's the first motherfucker that's saying exactly that, you know. Um, pretty insane. Can we look at TNX? Maybe. Could check some yields. I know mortgage yields uh, jumped up quite a bit, so worth checking out. Market looks like it's up a little bit this morning. Um, let's see. Let's see what sort of things are looking like here. So we dipped down into this box range. You said to pay attention to the cues. Still flagging backwards. 
Got through where I thought it would hold the low, but now gapping and pushing up and still looking like a bull flag. So let's clean up some of the projections off of this thing. What is this insane shit I drew up here? Why would I do this? The fuck? I don't know what I drew there. And so that's a channel we're following if he's going to keep tracking back or if we have a bull flag forming like we talked about, right? This could be like a monstrous thing um, that people aren't paying attention to. This could be something like, you know, on the order of magnitude like that. It may not be as, as terrible as we think. Um, do I want to do this with the Dow Jones 100 chart? Let's see. Load 100 Dow. So let's look at some things. Good old Dow 100. Boy, I couldn't stick more shit on this if I dreamed about it. All right, let's get rid of that. Let's look at the Dow 100, shall we? Now, when we look at this chart, right, we've got effectively on here, with, at this resolution, which you can see, which I keep it at the six month, you know, one bull flag, and really a bull market for 100 years has come from that, you know, from the Great Depression. Nothing has been quite as ridiculous as, you know, the run, the, the correction of the Great Depression. But... Like I told you guys, linear skew really fucks with your head. Um, this isn't going to work on this chart because I have too much shit on it. Let's do that, this chart. Uh, oh, damn. Is this where I put that chart? Okay, not that chart. How about you? Okay. Damn, I've got something on every one of these fucking charts. Son of a bitch. Well, we don't need that guy. That was the old eggplant TA. And that was a projection from a while ago, right? If that eggplant could go a lot further, this is the projection out into the, the late 2020s. It's, uh, it's still possible. We don't need this guy there, do we? He's a little crazy. Uh, he's kind of funny. I'll get a different one. Fuck it. Uh, uh, we'll just do it on this chart. All right. So you deal with like some of the cycles in the US. It's good to go back and always check them out. So I look at the uh, the Dow 100 on, you know, six month increments. That's the kind of resolution to, to really look at the kind of trend wave you have in this guy. Um, DIA, what the fuck? DGI, there he is. Man, I have something on everything. I want to show you something. Check this out. From the breakout of the Great Depression till the next stable range in the 1960s, it's a 160% move. From the breakout, also we want to measure this from when it broke out. Broke out basically here, top dot here. Bill Clinton and Ronald Reagan's run, unbelievable, 10x, not you know 175% versus 1,000%, and interestingly enough, whoops, don't do that. From here, 1954. About 1965, about nine, 10 years. From here, 1983 to 1999, about 16 years. And uh, what I thought was interesting about this was the next breakout, right? Clearing the high of uh, this time period to right here. This is actually the same scale and duration as the first wave out of the Great Depression era. Like once you cleared the Great Depression, this move lasted 10 year, about 10 years, it was about 170%. And this move also has lasted since the 2013 breakout to right now, 10 years, and about the same percentages as what took us out of uh, the 50s into the 60s in the space race. So we either have a mega cycle like the 20, roaring 20s like we talked about and emerge in something like, like a trend like this, or this is danger, right? So this bull flag is definitely an inflection point that we find in the Dow Jones. 
Um, right now, as we sit, right, it is either the continuation along this arc, and this is the kind of waves that the Dow does, right? He does monthly waves. From the leave of this, it's an entire like mega trend that lasts, you know, literally from the bottom here in 1942 up to 1966. And then the same thing is true here. You leave from 82 and mega trended all the way through for the next two decades into the internet bubble. We're along that kind of a tide now. And either we are facing like, you know, a topping formation like this that's going to counter structure down and become a much deeper correction. Or this guy is going to do something greater than the amplitude of the Great Depression and, you know, between the Great Depression and the wave that took us into the 60s. So I thought it was interesting. You could look at this chart and be like, wow, this is such a huge run. This is such a huge run. But the only really massive run is the one in the middle. And this is something I told you about logarithmic charts that are important to kind of keeping your, your perspectives right. The really big, big breakout run is really just that one. The 80s to, uh, to the end of, uh, you know, to the new millennium. It remains to be seen, like, you know, what we're on right now with, um, you know, a war situation like we do and the world kind of like, you know, you know, at complete odds and just really like just splitting apart between BRICS and the Western banking system. Is this going to lead to like a hyperinflationary cycle? Because that's really what allowed this to happen, right? A very high sustained inflationary cycle is what this really was. And we are facing something like that with war spending. So the chances that the fundamentals are there for something bigger than, you know, these two runs is very, very likely. So I thought this was an interesting chart to bring up and let you guys check out. It's a very good bet that your money keeps getting out. That's why we talked about um, the haves versus the have nots, right? Talking about race versus like things like Ford. Right, these are the haves versus the have nots. The people at the top, the top one percent are getting richer, and the people at the bottom they hoard cash. You know, you never want to hoard the medium of exchange, you, that's why rich people hold assets. Right, they're going to adjust with inflation, it is the people holding cash that are going to suffer. So, in very you know, high inflationary periods of time, it's the, the bottom of the food chain that suffers. It's pretty much the way things are organized, the bottom of the food chain always suffers, you know, in any given situation. Um, Turkish Liras, devalued upon arrival. No, I'm just playing. Respect. Appreciate the bits. <laughs> uh, don't come in with a bad attitude. Those guys are trying to point out something useful. That blog is uh, pretty useful to you to learn a little bit about how central banking works. And it's an uh, easy bet that money keeps getting devalued. All the fiat currencies based on defla you know, inflationary systems, so it's not like rocket science. So don't act like a smug dick. It's not like you fucking said something that was fucking Einstein, so don't be an asshole. And don't make me have to check you for fucking being an asshole. If you feel the need to do that shit, don't come to my show. Um, all right. So that being said, do you guys write me any war stories yet? So how, how have you guys had in time with this week and the amount of content and shows? Have you had time to sit down and meaningfully review uh, the concept call and look over some of your shit and, you know, see, you know, where it would have been, you would have had better executions incorporating some of what you learned? Or if you guys kind of need a break to, to get a chance to sit down and go over this on the weekend? No war stories. Did want to show you guys. So for the people I did get to see, oh man, there's a lot in this chat actually. Yesterday, yesterday. Okay, never mind. The stuff you guys wrote in Trade Lounge is too technical for the TV show. But you guys wrote some really good stuff. Saw some really good uh, implementations of what you guys learned in Concept Call, some really big hit R's, and it uh, looks like it's, you, know, you saw some immediate improvement. So um, you guys wrote out some really technical shit, though, in there. So I'll just leave it in there. But yeah, I definitely like what I'm seeing out of uh, the people who've been active in the calls and putting it into practice. And you do want to put it into practice like sooner than later. Like, it's a lot to take in, you know, until you actually have some practical application. It's not going to really stick. Like I said, it's like a language you're learning.
Yeah, that's uh, interesting. Because before the concept call, I had no, I had an idea about setting levels. Now I have more intel to really define them. Worked on organizing and came up with a way to apply the concept calls in the upcoming time. I was zooming out. Uh, we had some discussions during EU morning. It should solidify the concepts we covered in the concept calls. Looks good to me. Did two yesterday and will continue into weekend. Well, good. As long as you guys are working on it, I like to see that, that you're engaged in it. Make sure you guys like, get together and then, you know, go over stuff together. It's uh, it's not going to be good to just keep it in your head and kind of, it'll kind of mix around and you'll like, lose track of things. So definitely get together in the voice channels and, uh, you know, do some reviews together as a team. It'll be very beneficial to you. Looking at the chart with new eyes again, thanks to yesterday's calls. Much more clarity on where we should be on the charts and resolutions. Awesome. Uh, wow, I am not feeling 10 out of 10 right now. What the fuck? I'll be right back. Welcome to Winternomics TV. Your stream will begin shortly. Exactly, feeling so great. I'm trying to like get cold sweats or something. I might have eaten some bad again, so I'm gonna have to wrap this up kind of quick. Um, let me go to do some macro things. Uh, man, yeah, I can barely pay attention right now. So I gotta just uh, do some macro stuff. I'm gonna get you guys out. It's 9:15. <clears throat> It's like throwing me off. It's like happening very fast. <laughs> Not sure what's going on there. Um, all right. So make sure you guys get into voice. Do some prep and research with you, uh, you know, with each other over the weekend. If I can, I'll come and do a review with you guys. If I see you guys in there, um, get to go over your plays and kind of recontextualize them now with some of the things you've learned. And you should kind of see where you've like you know over traded and where you could have made plans to kind of like you know. Um, be, been more patient and allow for your macros to turn into like the place you're looking for. Uh, that's what I detect is the biggest problem for everybody's a, a lack of patience. And, uh, you know, for all the plays that we have in high resolutions, how few of them have been done, you know, tackled by anybody, you know, speaks on that massively. Um, this is all right. So spy things. So possible rotation there. We had a level down here on, that we, Keep on the chart. There's a lot of levels. We won't worry about that specifically. Let's check out the CAC because Europe's been the strong place. And um, so both sides didn't shape up exactly like we looked, but he's rotated now. A structure that could very much, you know, um, be very bullish if he gets up here and takes out the trigger. This at least it looks a little better, and he's got a chance of having the double bottom hold right now. So that's your trigger line in the sand. Germany. Germany rotated. Uh, he's a little bit bigger structure. So these guys, like I said, so kind of wicked out the low a little bit, but this is what we're paying attention to because the market didn't look so bad um, when you're looking at Germany. Uh, so looking at that, those bull flags, we were also looking at the sentiment area for the shooting cluster. And it did indeed go down and test almost the depths of it before we bounced back up. And so we're still in this bull flag now attempting to rotate it. 
Europe looks like it's showing um, more signs of uh, attempting to do that. I'm sorry, give me a second. <sighs> what the fuck is happening? Stress niggas, we're gonna finish this much faster. <laughs> I can't be too wordy. I'm kind of going through it. Um, all right, so like I said, depths of the, the low right here. It looks like we've got a much bigger bull flag on this guy. Um, I say, you know, I think we're paying attention to this guy, like you know, like reses like this. Like, you know, this could be a large scale rotation, like I said, for the Dow. SP's lagging it a bit, Q's lagging it more. The diamonds are the guys that look kind of more like you know, bullish, like the CAC and, and Germany, but right now, you know. Oh, fuck. Charts. Charts, charts, charts. My bad. I got it. I got it. Sorry. Yeah, I'm retarded. Okay, let's try that again. Ah, Jesus. Alright. Got it, got it, got it. Um, Alright, so CAC. Sorry. I'm a little off now. My bad. So CAC, like we said, is a fully rotated version of that giant bull flag that we see the NAS trying to do. But because the NAS and the US markets are not best to read, right, this looks like more dire when we look over here. But when we look at the whole world basket, remember we did that? We did a SPX 500 and we put that guy, you know, looking at that guy, we added the world to it. And we can kind of see it, right? So, the U.S. market kind of gives us a, a kind of false sense of what's going on. We look at it like Europe is far stronger and doesn't look anything like that. But the exact same bull structure the S&P has rotated in different parts of the world. This is why it's good to kind of like, you know, look at like just more than one singular asset. It may give you a false sense of where the market really is if you don't do this. So in looking at it, right, we can clearly see like, you know, CAC and UK, they look real bullish. They didn't pull back half as bad as uh, what we're seeing here, like in Hong Kong and in the NAS and the U.S. markets. Um, so that's kind of what we're trying to keep our focus on. Um, all right, so looking at that right right now, being patient enough to allow uh, for this flag to get here and rotate, if the European markets are going to pull us higher, we're trying to be patient enough for that rotation. And a lot of things we talked about in the concept calls is not chalking yourself to pieces while something on a bigger res that doesn't allow for like every single day trades to rotate to rotate. Um, we want to obviously be alive for tides like this, right? We don't want to die in, in the pullback flags that happen along major tides. So if this happens to be one of those that take us higher and chase those other markets, if there's strength, we want to be alive for it, right? So this has been a very large scale bull flag, lots of fucking destruction from summer with, uh, you know, crypto lows and, you know, what we're seeing over here at the end of the year, you know, for us to even get going. And people don't generally survive these kind of counter structures. If you look at this, really, we've been in a counter structure for since the end of 2021. And these things take take whole you know generations of traders out of the fucking market. They just don't survive these things. So our goal is to not get chopped to pieces before the tide comes and leaves you in the dust. Um, gotta bounce. <laughs> Sorry, charts. All right. So, anyways, nine twenty two. Um, so that being said, that's the S and P. We said the Q's version of it. The S and P is probably the cleanest read on it. Look, we have on that chart. And so the cues, all these flags correlate, right? So if we keep seeing the, the CAC in Germany push out, then it's reasonably keep paying attention to these. Like I said, with the, the market the way it is right now, tech has been an underperformer, but the industrials weren't. And industrials are really where like, you know, big strength still is. You guys had asked for this one on last on the show. And then we talked about deer, right? These guys look really bullish. We look at these guys on big resolutions, like we looked at the NAS, right? These guys don't look like they're fucking end of the world at all. That, that looks like it could go make a new high at any minute, you know, let it prove itself. But some of these things just don't look that bad, you know? Look at Mickey D's. I mean, 
Mickey D's has really been in the same like bull arc since like 2004. COVID be damned. So, you know, if it's not clear at first, it's always a problem with resolution. Nike and such. And that's why we had the Nike structure like that. You know, these guys, this is either the end of the world or these guys are, are going higher. Um, paying attention to things like these, Vucor. Oh, did you guys see uh, one from the show that we had from before? Um, FSLR. So you guys to pay attention to this guy in solar. Where's the rest of his chart? Squiggles, squiggles. We had this guy from 2019 in the show. Paying attention to him, and he's definitely followed exact arc, right? Just rotated through time, built a shit ton of volume here, and a massive markup now to possibly test this trigger up here. He's almost there right now. So if you guys pay attention to this, right? We talked about this about solar, and we have this high resolution solar chart we tell you to pay attention to, right? As part of the entire energy complex. So a lot of these things, you know, there's a lot of stuff that's pretty bullish for such a very bad sentiment in the marketplace. <sighs> Um, LAH, let's see, LAH, Lufthansa. Yeah, well, German Airlines, right, are doing a lot better than um, U.S. ones. But that's, an, that's a good indication for you to bring that up. That's, an, that's a good bull structure that correlates what we're seeing in the markets right now. And we talked about, um, uh, what was it, RCL versus Zoom. There's something else we talked about, recreation versus something else on the other show. Anybody remember what that ratio was? I we talked about Zoom CCL. All right, now I got still a bear, so we can do CCL, Zoom. What was the other one we had? We had, uh, we had RCL with something else. What was the other one? I think it was Haves and haves nots now. Well, this is DAL Zoom. So this is Delta versus Zoom, and let's do the left plans versus Zoom. Um, just anything against fucking Kathy, right? So this is this is actually recreation, you know, versus fucking like indoor. And this is still the wave that Kathy's on the wrong side of. You know, that's absolutely a bull fucking wave going on against Zoom. Uh, we did we did uh, race in the GM and all those. Yeah, it was those. It was DAL Zoom and Disney Disney Zoom. That's what it was. So, right, like this is the entire tide you can see, and just kind of like, you know, rec it's like recreational. It's still the recovery from COVID against anything that would kind of keep you indoors using technology. This is still, you know, tech Kathy's still on the wrong side of this, also. Um, all right, so, anyways, um, before we get too stuck on that, we're short on time. It's 9 26. Crypto things. So, some wicked dump came through last night. Uh, looked pretty bad. With an insta bar down and uh, off of boats and coke good level to pay attention to but still not taking out the lows of this flag right now and all these things kind of correlate with what we're seeing in the market so don't be too zoomed in on an instant move like that i know silver gates in the in the news and they're going to fud the shit out of that they're going to fud the shit out of cz but you know fud is uh is the name of the game in crypto so you know pay attention to price structure right read the charts not the news or you're going to get mind fucked so for right now you know it's not that big a move in the scheme of what we've been doing. It's just part of the consolidation. So be patient, right? Like we said with ETH, we have a good line in the sand for where we give a shit about that guy. And he didn't get through it. So if you guys are being paying attention to this, right, the same range we told you to watch, ETH is actually literally still in it. Hasn't gone anywhere. Same box range. So... Golden ticket show, correct. So right now we're still watching ETH. I extend this box range over and keep paying attention. It's same bull flag here that we're waiting for it to re-rotate on stocks. Looks like they're rotating on stocks. If that's true and crypto, you know, strengthens back up, you may see them rotate back up to here. But again, right, you have a clear line in the sand to pay attention. ETH's a good proxy for pretty much everybody. He didn't make it through here. Most of crypto just pull back with him right now. So um, that being said, you know, risk assets and stocks look a little better. Crypto had been the strength for a while. Maybe crypto is a little relatively weak right now. But if stocks drag higher, it likely means crypto can still rotate back up and go follow it if, uh, if that's what happens. VIX things, we were paying attention to him on 21. He came back out of Stevie D's level. So he never broke out of here. This is death if he break out of this. Um, back under 21, we want to pay attention now. And the low range here, see if he holds this or if he's able to fade, fade, you know, um, bleed through it and keep on pushing south. 
deeper under 21. Uh, that's always definitely bullish. DXY things. So DXY reached the top of this range. That was a range we told you to pay attention to. And he's basically choked on that range, which has allowed for this move to kind of take a breather as the euro keeps on rotating towards this angle. But so far, he looks pretty much like he's doing the projection and he probably is just in another bear flag right now. So um, remains to be seen, but he can still finish this out and get to this angle if you're paying attention to Forex. Um, so that's VIX, DXY, stock things. All right, dudes, I don't have time to, to take any symbols and I'm feeling like I'm about to fucking pass out. So I'm going to jump off right now. I'll catch up with you guys next week. Stay safe. Finish a week strong, dudes. Don't force any trades. Catch you guys on the flip. Peace out. Welcome to Winternomics TV. Your stream will begin shortly.